All right, start whenever you want. All right, so, um, I mean, we have a good problem. Uh, and the problem is that we just have a lot of tools. It's a great problem to have. It's, uh, it's really a testament though that, uh, you know, community is working. So we have a, a, a fantastic contributions. But we kind of need to make these tools a little bit easier to um, navigate, to find them and so on. And so there are some things that we probably need to do as soon as possible. And I just want to talk about them. I tell us some proposals. I don't know if these are optimal proposals. So this is why we want to have this discussion. Uh, and John, can you enable screen, screen sharing, please? Uh, yep, yeah, I just enabled it. Sorry about that. That's fine. People can rename themselves now, too. All right. So uh, this is what I kind of want to talk about. This is outline for today's discussion. So I, there are two subjects, really, the tool panel and <clears throat> tool maintenance issues. So they're different in scope. Tool maintenance, that's obviously how you see the main tool panel. Tool panel is more of a deployment uh, uh, domain and so on. So let's talk about tool panel. So I spent some time actually understanding how this works. Uh, and um, because last time I personally touched tool panel when we just had tool underscore conf.xml. So that was easy. So that was probably 10 years ago. Um, so the current structure of the tool panel, and if you, if you look at any of the instances, it's, um, well, it's not really, um, it's if you're if you, if you haven't used Galaxy before, it's very hard uh, to orient yourself here. Uh, especially, uh, of course, there's a search, but in many cases you don't really know what you're searching for. And so this is what precipitated that idea to propose some structure. And this is this PR which uh, was the PR to IUC. There were some a lot of back and forth comments, and after that, I think we settled on more or less that structure. Obviously, it's uh, you know it's uh, subjective, uh, and anybody on this call, for example, probably can propose some other structures as well. So uh, there is really no reason to have just one structure. But with the current infrastructure, the way it's put up, uh, the way it's the way it's set up, I don't think it's going to be easy to uh, to have different structures for tool panels. So this is probably a good start. Um, and we've been thinking about this. So this is, for example, an image from the uh, current grant that supports Galaxy development here in the US. And um, this was sort of one of the ideas how the panel can be restructured. And in this case, it's really not uh, restricted to tools. It's restricted to activities, activities in this case, different kinds of analyses, different data types, you know, whether you want to operate with text or BAM or uh, fast five or something like this. There's of course two tools and workflows and there is a, this ability which we have to some extent right now is customize, make, make a custom list. And so this is an example in this mock-up how this can work. So um, another thing that I kind of want to say is that, you know, two panel is not sacred and um, it's, I'm, I have a tunnel vision in that sense because you know, I've seen Galaxy in this form for the past, for, for quite many years, but in reality, it's a little bit narrow. And so it, uh, I think interferes with uh, descriptive tool names. So uh, there are various things that we can do about this. I couldn't find that image, but there was a, a mock-up from, uh, from Freiburg where there is an overlay on top of the tool panel. So there's an overlay here which, with different tool categories. So at least you can see everything at once. That's already very helpful. So there are many possible solutions to this problem. Um, and so um, I also, I, I spent some time sort of figuring out how this works um, because uh, 
they want to understand why it's so difficult to, for example, order tools. And I also wanted to understand this particular problem. I mean, you know, if, uh, if Nate or new one cannot easily figure out how to sort tools, that means there is an issue clearly. So please correct me because I, again, uh, I might not completely understand how this works, but we have three essentially tool configuration files now, well, depending on the instance. And so this one, uh, the shared tool is lives on CVMFS. That's the most comprehensive uh, of them. Uh, it has a more extensive structure than the tool conf and integrated tool panel. So there's, so there's a history here, obviously. Initially there was tool conf, then there was integrated tool panel uh, after the development of tool shed. And then there was this idea to uh, unify tool distribution across usegalaxy.star instances. So this is how it came up. Uh, and so challenges here, usability challenges is that, you know, you all know it's very difficult to order. Uh, I not, I think, I don't, I don't think there is a clear understanding of what sort of goes before this. Maybe it's not clear understanding in my head. So again, please correct me. And any instance you go, uh, it has loose tools. So for example, this is main and there is Qualibum uh, wise here. I don't know. If you go to .eu, you also have a situation where you have some uh, tools like map annotation ID. So there are these loose tools and uh, they probably were put in some category in, in, the, in the underlying tool conf. But uh, in this, sometimes you have more of these loose tools, sometimes you have less of these loose tools and so on. So uh, it's not ideal, but then what can we actually do? So um, it's, it's not an easy problem to solve because uh, in order to restructure tool panel, you need somebody who understands all the tools and we don't have such a person. I mean, we might have people who understand genomic tools, but then we have people who are responsible for proteomic tools or you know, once we go to uh, climate science, for example, so it's, we really need kind of a domain knowledge, but we still need to start. And, you know, the solution I came up with is just to find some XML editor and sort of start reshuffling to get to more or less that form. And so this is, this is sort of for me, this is what I'm going to try to play with in the next week or so, and then create a PR out of this, I'm not sure where yet. Uh, and then if we can, if we can as a community sort of get, go back and forth around this, maybe in, you know, in a month or two, we'll have a, a more meaningful structure for the tool panel. So uh, before we jump to tools, sort of what's, the, what's the feeling? Uh, how can we, how can, what are the good avenues for um, solving this? I think a lot of it can build off of work we tried uh, pursuing uh, with the tool suites integration um, that Julian had started uh, before she left. Um, unfortunately, we can't use any of that, that work, but um, I think we have a lot of uh, design ideas for, for how we can at least present the tools um, in the panel uh, that we just need time to, time to pursue. Um, Maybe we can put them on the court on the the roadmap for the UIUX team next quarter or something, and and prioritize them uh, if we really want to push it. Um, well, uh, but was was Julian's work relying on some kind of a tagging of tools? Or uh, so it, it did a couple of different things, right? So it allowed user based toolbox organization. It also allowed pre configured uh, admin based organization, where you had you, you essentially had multiple views of the toolbox. And those were seeded by um, the usegalaxy.eu tool suites, right? So they have rnaseq.usegalaxy.edu and, <laughs> and so on. So you would have multiple views of the toolbox. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of the infrastructure that was going in place to, to make that happen could be leveraged to um, allow user sortable toolboxes. And you could imagine 
um, building admin sorted toolboxes on the fly and really customizing not the loading necessarily, but the display of the toolbox um, on the fly. Yeah, well, of course, the way .eu um, goes around this problem is that they have these application specific domains. Yeah, exactly. So instead of having to run a separate web process for each toolbox, you would just run multiple process, however many processes you actually need, but they would all have all of the toolbox filtering. Well, I don't know if we I don't know if it's realistic to put this on UI UX working group for the next four months because I think there are lots of uh, more uh, urgent UI needs. But here, at least, I think we can just start doing this. And, um, at least I'll start doing this. And if anybody has better ideas, then um, so I'll do a PR uh, soon with this, and then. Are we constrained to only sort of two levels in the hierarchy? If you go to your listing, I mean, I wonder if, you know, for example, things that are, um, I don't know, sort of, uh, I don't know what the right, I don't know what the right categories are, but, you know, machine learning tools to me are very different than text processing tools, different than genomics tools. And then with genomics, we have, you know, mapping and um, map data tools, assembly tools, but then there's like computational chemistry. I wonder if we could have kind of a limited set of, of sort of top level categories. And then with each of those, you'd have a broader set. And with each of those, you would have the individual tools. I, I just don't know if, if we're constrained to those two levels of hierarchy. So yeah, any you know, constraint there is artificial. It's, yeah, that's just what we've always had. Yeah. So, so, so in the current structure, I thought that, you know, for example, like get data or interactive tools, they will be this level. So these are just labels, but then the actual tools will be within these categories. And here we, at this point, we are constrained to two, la to two layers, but um, I, I don't think that's a, a fundamental restriction. Yeah. Anton, have you looked at the, the EDAM ontol ontology organization of the toolbox? Yes. Uh, and this is one way, and I've seen screenshots, and um, we can, this is again, one question to IUC is that shall we require uh, two authors to, 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 to explicitly set this. However, I, I don't know how useful that is because, I mean, it's useful because it, it, it provides some structure, right? So some objective way to perhaps sort the tools and also it provides a way to automate generation of this kind of layouts. but. Some categories, they're kind of like meaningless, like conversion. Yeah, that was my main question. How, how useful is it actually? Okay. Um, I, I still think the idea of, you know, organizing things in that way might make a lot more sense than modifying these XML files, right? So if, if, if you, you have the Anton, well, what you built here, right, is the Anton, um, ontology, if we could sort of encode that in the tools as the galaxy ontology, and then maybe have some sort of legacy mapping for older tools. I think that gives us a lot more structure to work with in terms of rendering it on the client side than sort of, you know, figuring out how we keep integrated tool panel, you know, in sync or whatever. I mean, um, it, it just feels like the tagging approach, it, it feels like a, a more rich path for, for keeping this going. Um, and keeping things in sync. Yeah. Um, and if I can say what, something is, is that's also connected to, to Mike's point about the uh, level of uh, the number of levels you can go, because with uh, with uh, something like Edom, basically you have several layers, and one category can appear in, in multiple branches, which is something we, we normally don't do that in, in the fixed structure like this. Uh, so that's another advantage that we could we could have using something like Edam or our own uh, Edam or similar to Edam. Does anybody have um, kind of a tree with Edam structure so we can look at it? Is there, is there... I mean, you can create this um, on your own, and there's an Edam viewer. Um... Yeah. Because, you know, this is one of the reasons I wanted to have this round because doing this is brutal. 
it's and it, it's, I mean it, it will only apply to use galaxy.org, right? I mean it's yeah. not something that's shared easily because um, you have to edit the XML file. Um, and the ontologies would give you the opportunity to just order within the ontologies. Um, and uh, is can we modify them? Can we can we modify them? Yes, it's a community um, project. Um, I mean, I don't know if we can do things like, you know, some tools because that's not really an ontology. But um, I don't know. We could add our own ontology, um, for instance. Yeah, that's what um, I'm kind of thinking. That could be the default view. And then we can have a layer of customization on top of that. But the main thing is to separate sort of the config file loading from the presentation completely. So what that means that essentially we need to go through all two XMLs and add these explicit tags. Well, I mean, for the older tools that might not be possible. I mean, yes, new, new tools should have them, but we could augment the tool loading to sort of dynamically attach tags if we wanted and just sort of have an admin or even, you know, a core and admin configured file to sort of add additional tags for older tool IDs. I, I don't think- so, so you will have a mapping file between tool IDs and EDAM categories for this? For the old stuff, yeah. Yeah, and I, yeah, again, I, we could also, yeah, it doesn't need to be EDAM. I mean, EDAM's great, but it, it's maybe not the, it's not the um, structure you have here, right? So I think we should be sort of free to sort of come up with additional annotations and ontologies, but yeah. Okay, because you know this is this is monkey job. I mean, I just spent some time doing this yesterday. I think I went crazy, uh, but so this is not ideal solution to this problem. Um, so how can we? So that should then this is uh, in then this completely then in IUC's domain. And um, I'm, I'm thinking, is 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 it possible to have some um, uh, items from this on the two working group roadmap for the next four months? Is somebody Wait. from a two working group there? I was just talking to Alex. I thought he was. Mm. I thought it was in here. Anton, aren't you on that working group? <laughs> well, maybe. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. It seems like the tools working group has a few people, and this seems like something that can be split. Um, and the IUC has draft uh, draft EDAM annotations already, or did we we didn't merge them? Did we? Uh, I think it's still. OpenPR can dig it out. Uh, Alex is joining, and he's the organizer for the tools working group right now. I mean, does any does anyone want to sort of offer a counterpoint to tagging tools as like a better path forward. Um, Cause I could sort of see admins, local instances wanting to have very fine grain control the way they do now. Um, like this works for a huge tool set, but maybe for a smaller tool set, it's not ideal. We could also have like hierarchical tags, right? So you could have local tags, upstream tags, uh, so instance local tags upstream, sort of like the tags we present or EDAM has, and then you could have personal tags and the order would just sort of cascade, right? And you could, you would, you could prioritize based on that. So like if I tag something as RNA-seq and it's select random lines, it should still show up in RNA-seq for me, right? That kind of thing. So... What's the first step here? This is agreeing for so. So if it exists for new tools, then we need to start creating mapping for old tools now.
I mean, yeah, yeah I think we want to sort of decide if we should just take this document you have here as the and the the ontology, or if we want to try to merge it with EDAM in some way. Um, I can. I mean, I, I do, I'm not married to this document. This was just something that was sort of logical to me, but I'm not insisting on it in any way. It's an example. It's an example yeah. that, that makes sense more than what I've seen from EDAM, for sure. But uh, if we can augment things and kind of create our own ontology, then perhaps we should start with that. Yeah, I haven't really worked with the ontology formats and stuff. I, I would wonder if you could like sort of create our own ontology and just sort of stick an EDAM term in wherever. Um, mm -hmm. So like we have variation data up top and then BCF tools, like if there's if there's a way to just sort of stick an existing EDAM term in there or not, I don't know. But I mean, it seems like from a programming perspective, it should be easy. I think this is more of a curation problem. So speaking of curation problem, Alex is here now. Um, What's up? Anton, do you want to give the brief? Uh... Um, yes, so um, the question is, um, we need to be able to reorganize two panel in a kind of a bloodless way. Uh, and in order to do that, we need to start tagging tools. Uh, well, new tools are tagged, the old tools are not tagged. So for the old tools, we need to create mapping from two IDs to the categories that we want to create. And so uh, the question to tool group was, is that something that uh, can be put on the roadmap for the next four months? Because this round ends in August. Um, I mean, the... The architecture is already there. We, it's just going and adding the lines, right? How does this work? So it, it's a tag, right? So, and if you want to have multiple categories, I mean, what's the, pre, how it does it decide which goes first and how does this, how would this work? So I think it's, I think what, what you guys are talking about is it's just in the shed file for all of the tools. Uh, and that is just the YAML. So. I don't know. I, I, I suspect the way it's ordered is just the actual order of tags within that YAML file. Um, I haven't had the experience of, of like checking on that, but that's what I believe it would be, which would make this a pretty simple. I, we're text. talking about the EDUM tags that are in. Ah, got it. Mis <laughs> misunderstood. Um, in that case, I don't know off the top of my head. So just, they are, um, I mean, you have the tags that describe operations so that are part of the uh, XML. And um, then it's us basically deciding how we order things. And currently that's uh, hard coded in the code base, um, but we can decide these things. Although I would like to make a point of alphabetic ordering because that's just the natural thing. Yeah. Um, so I actually, I wrote a, PR that does that already. I can upstream it. Um, we can get in at 2109. So I have, a, I have a question about how we might actually use this. Let's say you go through this process and you go ahead and you tag it according to the scheme that you've just described. And we run something that, that retroactively goes through all the old tools and tags them. So using it going forward, um, what, do you, what do you think of the idea of storing a query against those tags and that being a category or something like that. Like you say, that way it could be user defined or, or, or administer defined, right? Like here's a category of things that are relevant to this Galaxy instance. Select these tags, omit those tags. You know, you have some kind of selection criteria like a query, and then you save that as the quote category, right? Is that kind of where your, your ultimate goal is? by tagging that kind of flexibility? What's the goal? So you get it tagged, right? That's my, that's my question is, what are you gonna do with those tags when you're done? Is it gonna be a canned ordering arrangement or are you looking to make something a little more flexible for the administrator so that he can describe, he can describe what his uh, category structure is gonna be for himself? 
uh, from the user perspective, the scenario is like this, you know, you have just give me all tools which work, work on text. And from these tools, which work on tabular text or, right. you know, give me all tools that are RNA seq, but I only want to look at mappers. You know, I don't care about counting transcripts. I just want to see mappers, which are RNA seq specific. That's what we need. Gotcha. So, so ultimately, it, ultimately, that's your goal is you do want to have like robust kind of querying against against this data set. And so that's going to inform the, the nature of the tags that you put down there. So just pulling the ontological stuff isn't enough, right? You need formatting tags, you need any other characteristics you might be able to search against, right? Like I guess set out, out, output type tags, what will, you know, input type tags, or, or, or I guess you could just use the existing fields, but um, and I'm just trying to get a, get a scope of what your end goal is with the tagging, so. I mean, I like we're no, trying to improve the current tags. situation. Yes. Sure. And we, we, if I may These suggest, are all fancy things we can do, but like we're trying to improve the current we, situation. We should, yeah, we should, those are different tags. We should I do limit think tagging is, is the mechanism that will give you a lot of flexibility in the future. I agree with you that, that that's a good way to go about it. I just, I was curious about what you intended to do with it once you had it, you know. So that's, those are different tags though. You have Adam topics and operations, those are separate actual uh, tags on the XML. and if we want to, we can also add, add in, um, data uh, as another tag, in which case you can filter by all of that. I, uh, we, we, we should try, I think, we should try to limit the amount of tags and be a little less ambitious because drilling down from give me first all of this, then select these tags, then select these tags, this sounds great in principle, but the problem with that is that you will expect to have uh, exhaustive coverage. We have thousands of tools and we have, if we have all these multi layers of, of tags and many, many tags, there is no way in hell, uh, pardon my French, we'll be able to tag all the tools we have now and every single tool with all of these layers, especially when we come up with an idea of these yeah, tools. Sedum ontologies are hierarchical, right? So they have solved that problem. Um, so if you do something that's uh, bioinformatics, uh, mapping, whatnot, you get all the preceding hierarchy as well, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. we also, in terms of data types, we, we track that, right? In our EDAM, we have EDAM terms on our data types, but probably we should just stick with the galaxy on, I mean, we effectively have an ontology because our data types have an inherited structure. So it's, these things we don't need to annotate, right? We'll just sort of get them by default. Um, I have a, a kind of a, maybe considered a stupid question, but you know, you said, I think Anton said before, the purpose of tagging all of this is to present the user with an you know, exhaustive list of all the possible tools, but just thinking like, is there a real productive scenario where they would actually want to do that? I mean, it's, I think it's mostly new users that use the categories and everybody else searches. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's a good point because I, I think new users would more benefit from the activities part that um, Anton also mentioned where you say, I want to do an RNA-seq analysis or something like that. Yeah, exactly. I'm thinking like, you know, if I'm a user, I'm coming in thinking, okay, this is the analysis I want to do. And here are popular pipelines with different tools mixed and matched. I'm not really thinking about, okay, what are all the tools I could use to map SAM to, or BAM to SAM or um, to FASTQ, et cetera. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's something that can be driven by what John said, um, our data type ontology. So we know what's in and what's going out. So, you know, you want to convert SAM to BAM, that's not difficult to show you the tools that in principle can do it. Um, I mean, obviously not all SAM in to BAM out is a straight conversion, but yeah. I'd also like to just quickly jump in and say this, that we don't have to do every tool all at the same time. Like this can be a process so mm -hmm. yes, we have thousands of tools, but if we just start with the top couple hundred, that's pretty feasible yeah. to do in, in a little while. And we have that list based on what tools are run on yeah. main, on EU and uh, 
And hey, the other thing is like we, we can start with the I mean our first ontology can be just what is the chateau conf now, right? So that'd be the default that we start off of. Um, or the Anton ontology that we just saw. Yes. <laughs> I mean the we, just, we, need, we need to start for, for example, what what can I do now? So can I do should I start editing, you know, two YAML files? I mean if we wanted to deploy a new freshly organized tool panel tomorrow then yeah it's got to be a manual editing of integrated tool conf and, and those sorts of things uh, no but actually so suppose we if we want to do tagging then can i already start doing this i, I mean I, I would i would I say that's create something... a spreadsheet with edam terms and tool ids and we'll mm -hmm. figure out a way to integrate that right like that's okay Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe someone's something I usually should tell me to shut up if I'm wrong. But I mean, I feel like, you know, we don't want to go in and, I mean, we do want to upgrade, uh, you know, annotate the tools um, for as we're upgrading the tools, but we don't, we, we probably want all the old versions to also have tags, right? So that's something we need to do in core. And so there we just take a spreadsheet, we take tool IDs, we take maybe the latest version, and then we just sort of uh, attach those tags as we load the tools in. Can I, and can and I, that I think is something we could just do from a spreadsheet. Can I jump in on this? Uh, we, I, I linked a pull request on tools I you see that's uh, from, from Bjorn uh, a couple of minutes ago. And here we are not adding actually idem tools directly, but the idea is to have bio tools IDs. And this is the same concept basically what we did with, uh, uh, with using Conda for tool dependency. So leverage an existing ecosystem and uh, join a community and do the work together with other people. So the bio tools is, is a link in basically a collection uh, of all the possible bioinformatics tools. And there the tools have, uh, so basically it's the, our underlying tools. So some tools will be there. And the, in the pages for some tools, then there's the links for the idem ontology. So we don't have to do all the annotation of the tools in, in the tools XML, but we just link to the bio tools ID and the rest of the uh, annotation of, of idem or the input the data types, et cetera, is done it's upstream, nice. yeah. upstream in, in, in bio tools. And we join a larger ecosystem of people that do that. And for the it's tools that are not, in, that are not I mean, on bio tools, either we add them to bio tools or if they are galaxy specific, we can still add, add either ontology on, on the tool XML as a fall, fallback. Do we know if we can yes. take the bio tools um, database? I mean, is the bio tools database open source? Can we like pull that information down so we don't have to make API requests when we um, are loading up the EDAM information, for instance? Because uh, this has been a yeah, it's, I think it's all stored on GitHub, uh, the the underlying database. I, I would I would need to to dig it up, but it's uh, it's Hervé Manager that is uh, one of the and and BR are the core PIs now of, of the bio tools. So it would be something we could uh, we could uh, easily extrapolate. And the only thing is obviously this is constantly updated, so you would need uh, some I don't know, salary job to to download every every now and then to, to keep it updated. We could ship one with it and then have like a, we used to have a, like a, I'm sure it's still there, but like a lin file updating script that you could set on a cron job or whatever to, to update if folks want for local instances. Yeah, and the same is true for the EDAM ontology anyway. Yeah. Looking at the PR, by the way, uh, should we just before we start going back and doing this retroactively make this part of the um of the um of the pr checks just to double just to make sure that they always have the tags to require that just so yeah, we don't mean, have this uh, problem going forward in the, in C in the, CI in the checks. tools well yeah so planemo and also just whatever ci checks are done i know they're mostly the same but there are a couple differences um on IUC and that way we can figure this out for retroactive tools, but also not have this problem going forward. 
Yeah, I think this should be uh, added uh, to the IUC standard if it's not already. I think maybe we added something like a strong recommendation for EDAM, but not biotools. Yeah. Does bio? Yeah, I'm I'm nervous. Um, does biotools allow non-bioinformatic tools, and can we add new tools? Um, those would be the two because I you of course can add new tools. Uh, there's just I think a process you open a pull request to, to and I, I I haven't done it, but I, I'm pretty sure you can do that as a community project. Uh, it, it, it's not a closed system at all. About the non bio tools, uh, I don't, I'm not sure about this. I can't answer that. I mean, it says bioinformatics and life sciences, um, but I think that is probably how, you know, Galaxy is as well. Uh, accepting other things, but came from there. We're, so we're, we're going to need a way in the interface to provide a secondary or tertiary layer of organization anyway, right? Because we want people to be able to organize their own toolboxes. So I'm not sure this matters that much, right? We're going to have we're going to have multiple layers of organization. That was kind of the point I was trying to get at is like, if we can just store, we could just cache the list, you know, and then we could very quickly make some kind of query structure on the client that lets you filter, order, do whatever the hell you want. You know, if, if we have those tags, if we have enough data points to filter on, you know, even with a hierarchy, we could still make it conform to the, the priority structure that Marius is referencing with the with the you know the hierarchical tags that's fine we can still make it we can still make the algorithm res, you know respect that um, so with bio tools because you know some tools won't have won't be in bio tools what they will be like loose tools like 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 this what what's going to happen to them yeah. if we automate this process right so for those we would have like a local galaxy mapping that we ship with galaxy or with the, some, something else that's, we're going to have to have multiple layers. It's, that's, that's what I was pointing out there. Yeah. And we can just ship that with the code base or whatever. I, I want to like, I think that if you take a tool like Sam tools, right. Doesn't it do a lot of different things and it's just going to have one bio tools entry. I, I really think tagging on the tools themselves and the tool IDs are more useful than trying to resolve the bio tools information. I, I mean, I, by all means, I think we should be putting the bio tools IDs on all the tools. But I, I think in terms of the tagging and the work that we're sort of handing off to the tools group, I think that we should be tagging tool IDs, not, not tool suites. Um, so I, I just wanted yeah. to push back and say that because uh, I, I I know like GATK right that's going to be one bio tool um, and it's it's going to be a bunch of different things right probably that's holds no. true for a lot of these categories of things yes it's it's going to be true for many of them I mean bad tools this is I, I don't think that is right um, yeah I don't I mean I don't so. I don't know if it's exactly right but for instance some tools is split up into individual commands. GATK anyway is not the thing anymore. It's now the individual programs, right? Um, it's uh, GATK, Mutech, GATK, whatnot. They have um, their individual things now. Okay. I mean, I, I could be wrong. I was just, that was just my- I mean, I, I'm not sure, right? I mean, I, I just briefly searched some tools because it's a good point. Like if, uh, if they're all lumped together, even though they have different functionality, that doesn't help us. A yeah, there's lot. four pages of GATK tools. Yeah. Yeah, and well, also bad tools is split up into many individual tools. So yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I just want to share a comment uh, that one of the participants in GCC training shared. I tried to find the, the the text. I couldn't find it. I'll look for it later. But they had two complaints about the tool panel. One was that if you go to the tool panel, for example, uh, there is a statistics and visualization uh, label which has like a gray background and there are three headers underneath statistics, machine learning and graphs and display data. If you expand one of those, you get a list of tools. The complaint was that these are not visually separated. The suggestion was, for example, maybe put a horizontal line because if I scroll down, I don't know whether I'm still, 
looking at the tools under statistics or the next section has started. So if there's a widget that can uh, visually separate the tools from other tools and headers from different headers and lit labels, that would make, I think, life easier for a new person using Galaxy. The other that's in, it's it's indented. I guess that's... You could also yeah, it's indented it's and it's not, different It's font. not we visually can... uh, distinguishable enough. Or You're right. Visible. We could have another lot, like a line underneath yeah. the expanded yeah. category. Or maybe title. a background yeah. color or for... Yeah. yeah. But I mean, this is like colors. details we can discuss. I mean, that doesn't even need to yeah. be discussed. Right? You can just float the headers and the names above, right? Yeah, I was gonna say that float the header. That would be the because I, I don't the boxes can be really big, right? So I don't. I well, it's not gonna solve our problem that we're trying to address here. Yes. So um, and so it's just um, just what what I'm sort of looking here, and I don't know if that's possible. I'm looking for something practical we can do tomorrow. So what what can we start? to address this issue? If John, if we sort of go with John's proposal, then we need to start that spreadsheet. Um, so, and I'm not sure what the structure of that spreadsheet would be. So you have a two AD and then you have several columns for different category sets or? Well, it seems like there was pushback and that we should be doing bio tools, not EDOM in a spreadsheet. So, but I then mean, I'm, I'm so, skeptical, but I mean, if, if, if Nicola says we should start, you know, annotating everything with bio tools and make sure that the bio tools database is, is synchronized there uh, it, it feels like feels like more work to me but that we should probably pick one of those two paths if we're going to make you do a bunch of work I mean, can you get both, more right? things automatically via bio tools and you can update them so these are two problems that we have if we annotate directly in the tool xml right so you would add a term because you know you reorganize or like i don't know something was wrong so you have to bump the tool version um, while for bio tools, that's, you know, you just update the data and you get a new thing. Um, I mean, it, it doesn't have to be that way. We can also ship things to augment it, but um, that would be the advantage with bio tools. You can update it over time. Can we just pull the data from uh, bio tools and bring it into yeah, our own I format think it's, so that yes. we don't depend too much on them? Like what John said is, I actually also yeah. would have some concerns if we only rely on that or wire it up too much with their with their information. So maybe we could set up a generic way and then just add a little bit of additional code to just pull it. I think that's uh, not a bad thing to look at, like you know how how we get the data in for the EDAM. You know that's just something we download and. As far as I understand it, for BioTools is the same. Um, but, so yeah. for EDAM, in bioinformatics, that's it? So it's terminal node? Or, or I don't understand something here. Uh, because then we can tag all tools with just one category. <laughs> one. You tag with multiple. <laughs> right? So it'd be bioinformatics, data, chemistry, I don't know, something. Yeah, and you're also, I mean, you're now in the green thing, which is, I don't know what it is, but you also have uh, operation, which might be interesting. Uh, yeah, is the operation going to give you more at the, at the second level, Anton, if you go back to operation, is, are they going to be more in there? Yeah, so you, see, so you have mapping, indexing, these are things we do, right? What are the blue? What are the filled in? Oh, those are ones that you can accept. Okay, you can dig deeper. Well, alignment is really, you know, it's fold recognition is also alignment. So it's a structure alignment. It's interesting. Yeah. Yeah, I think. Oh, for, the, for example, what would what would BWA be? You know, alignment and uh, local alignment and yeah, I think that's where it would fall into, right? But you can also go to BioTools BWA and check. Um, No, 
at least they have read mapping. So. So actually very confusing to be honest with you. <laughs> but, oh. Okay. Well, yeah. And so the, the other thing I want to say is if we go down the bio tools route, I mean, I, I, uh, many of the developers are friends of mine, and I, I appreciate the, the statement that this is all open source and downloadable, but I've heard complaints over many years that they weren't making the data accessible other than via downloading the JSON on the main page. So hopefully this has been fixed, but I think we should I'm verify put the link that in the description, fixed. right? The link is in the chat. You can download it. It's all JSON LD. I mean, this shouldn't be Okay. Problem. All right. So it has been solved. Thanks. That's all I want to say. It sounds like it, right? I mean, I just found it. So yeah. Updated 13 years ago. Uh, yeah, um, 13 days ago. I mean, sorry. Yeah. No, no. That, that's that. That's good. I, I just I, I was just reporting on a sort of historical artifact of things I'd heard in the past. Um, yeah, I mean, the entire thing was closed in the beginning, right? And they said that ah, we need to make it open source, but we have to clean it up, which is like. Okay, whatever. 13 okay. years to 13 days is a completely different so, yeah. no, I, I meant minutes. I meant to say 13 days. I really did. Yeah. Well, I have 10 minutes to go. So, but my question is the following. In the short term, in order to clean this up, that sounds like only manual manipulation of XMN can help us here. If we want to change it like tomorrow. Um, I mean, John's idea of spreadsheet uh, is maybe still not a bad idea because then whatever mechanism we decide on. You can do that relatively automatically. And uh, this automatic process, would it run into problems with this? I, I mean, I might, I'm tempted to say we would just disregard all of this, right? Your set of installed tools is a list and mm -hmm. we use tags to render the panel. Completely, um, complete separation in presentation of the toolbox from loading. Yes. Okay. It, but that's not happening really, tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, one okay. thing that we could also do tomorrow is I think the, the idea of loading the section title as you scroll down the panel would help a lot. I think that random comment um, from Kvon was good, right? That seems like a quick CSS fix. But. Yeah, I like that yeah, too. Or, do we expect a whole lot of huge, huge categories like that? Because I thought, Anton, you were saying you wanted to break down categories to have much fewer tools in each one. Yes. OK. I mean, it's still probably a good fix for now. I also have uh, work ready to PR that sorts within the categories if we want. So to alphabetize within the categories, we can get that in today if we want. Um, but there were some issues with the like sub uh, labels and things like that. If you're using labels, I obviously can't alphabetize those because then you lose any notion of what the label was supposed to indicate. Um, so yeah, well, PR it. Okay. All right. Um, so one thing we have 10 minutes. I just want to briefly talk about something that we can do easily, and that's tool maintenance. Well, I mean, easily, because there's, there's a clear path. We don't need a new framework for doing this. So uh, we have a tools which functionally correct, meaning that they have tools, so they satisfy all IOC requirements but they have just, they vary dramatically in terms of how friendly they are. So this is a table compute. That's a very complicated tool. And it's, I mean, it's just a slide, but it has gigantic help section with examples. So it's, you can use it. Then there is this thing, which is probably as complex as table. I mean, melting, explaining somebody how to melt a table. That's that's a chapter in a kind of a data frame uh, manual. But that's you know that's it. So I think that we should not allow these tools to go through. Uh, uh, Wait, I mean, this is a very very simple function, and it's described appropriately. Yes, well, the for you, function summarizes but, each unique variable value combination on a single line. Well, example, give me an example. I want to look at it. You know, if you go, for example, to uh, like, you know, uh, pandas melt, there will be a picture of it. So, so it's, yes, you, you can understand this. But from this, I, if I, I mean, I know what melt is, but I don't know what this tool would do. For example, what oh, happens if I have the link is for? Well, yes, but uh, you know, yes, link. 
Okay, so my mean, links links not great because I can also die and go away, which is would have a lot. Um, uh, so uh, I mean, I'm not trying to piss whoever wrote this too. I actually don't know who that is, but just uh, this is probably not a good example. That's what I'm trying to say very politely here. Uh, I mean, I would like to see, because again, there are galaxy quirks to it. What happens if you have headers and column names, for example, or, you know. I mean, it says it on the top, right? Input should have column headers. Is that a place to put that information? No, that's not ideal. That's true. And people don't read. That's true. In my experience, people don't read, so. Yeah, I mean, don't it's it's the help section, which is typically for here. You can put in the parameter help, but also have a validator on the data oh. type, making sure it had columns defined. They, they definitely don't read if there's nothing to read. Look at it that way. And um, and another thing that we can do is to synchronize names a little bit better because if you look at this, for example, so here it's split file according to those. It's one sentence. But in, in other cases, it's table compute, computes operation on table data. So two different sentences. So there's a two name and then description. And then we have things which is one. So it would be nice to settle on one way of doing this. And I have this in this PR, which I pushed some ideas on how we can do that because that's all clarity. It's, uh, and of course, it would also help if this is alphabetically sorted, but hopefully, you know, then on SPR will take care of that. So what I'm proposing here is maybe we can do a paper cut on um, just going through tools and we can organize this paper cut maybe by tool category. So for example, let's go and curate all text processing tools. Just do it. It's not that difficult to, we're not changing behavior. We just making sure that help makes sense. You know, a lot of those formatting issues really are just formatting issues. You know, if you, it's, it's possible to just make that thing that's bold right now always be capitalized the way you're asking for it just with a CSS change. It's, it's you know, those are, those are things you don't even have to like edit the no, no, you have to edit. There is no way to, I mean, it, this is, it needs to be uh, intelligently curated here. I, yeah, I, I, you cannot yeah. use, you, know, you cannot change the linguistic structure of the sentence with CSS as far as I can. No, I, I'm not suggesting we change the linguistic structure of the CSS. How about you just mentioned that your complaint was that some of them were lowercase and some were uppercase. Yeah, oh, well, of course. some yes, tools that's... are lowercase and some are uppercase. So like, in the, I mean, these are two names that we shouldn't be touching if there is an official yes, name. Yes, that's not my complaint. I don't. Oh, sorry. I misunderstood. I beg your pardon. My complaint is that there's lack of help sections. Sure. Hey, what do you think about, um, I, I know people don't read, but sometimes people leave comments. I mean, what do you think about the concept of having like a, like a, like a wiki style description that people can update well there is we can I mean, go it's a big, it's a, it's a, it's a well, that way right there is a there is an endless uh kind of a pathway of improvement here for example having restructured text as the formatting for this is not ideal it would be much better in markdown and uh, i mean there's there's all sorts of things that we can do I, i'm just trying to be practical here sure and i think one practical way to do this would be to just make an interface. And if somebody says, hey, how do I use this tool? And then they find out and then could edit it and change it and put instructions there. I don't know, like if they were authorized to do so. I, I don't know, I'm just trying to offer you. Well, they can do it on GitHub now. What's that? They can do it on GitHub now. They can do it on GitHub now. But I'm thinking about putting it right on the interface so you can just edit it, you know? Oh. Yes. I don't know. It sounds you like um, it sounds like something we don't want to do right now. Okay. We have other things. We need to be. We need to stay focused here. Well, we, we we do render those links to the bio tools, right? So it does sort of seem bio tools captures a bunch of information about how to get help on the tool. It looks like so maybe they that would be something to pass on to them, like wiki style content. Um, 
Um, yeah, we could also work on the examples and have a button to, I mean, we had the, uh, what, what was that called again? I mean, we could use the test data to run a tool. Uh, we had this also in the user interface at one point. Um, these are great examples, right? All these oh, the automatic tests. tour? Yeah, yeah, the tour, yeah. 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 I think that's a um, web hook, right? So yeah, it may or may not be activated. Yeah, I mean, I, we could we could think about promoting this if you will find a way to like tell people like what it does if that's helpful. I don't know. Um, I think we need to do sort of incremental improvement here. We need to start going some direction with small things to start. And I think the small things to start is just the edit the dem thing. It's just a lot of tools to edit. So that needs to be a, it cannot be one person. Just to uh, mention the second feedback uh, in GCC training was the search capability wasn't good. Yeah, and we know that. Something, unfortunately. You know, so these were the two, visual separation of tools, headers, and search. But then again, if we, you know, if we tag tools and search would work much better as well. So it's, it's, it's all kind of a circular thing. Okay, well, it's almost an hour. Uh, thank you for listening to me blabbing about this. So, um, but um, I still think that whoever schedules paper cuts, let's think about this. And so how does this work exactly? Do I submit a proposal for, for paper cuts? You make an issue. Message I Dave. A message Dave, okay, well then I know how to do that. <laughs> you can create a GitHub issue and tag it as paper cuts, right? I mean, the PIs can also decide that this is a priority and that we have to work on it outside of paper cuts. Because I don't know if this is a great community project. I mean, what it, it could theoretically work in the same way that you that Marius had that PR that had the big list of tools that we had to to work on with the checkoffs as it as it as we worked through it. And that's the only way I could see this as a paper cut as a single like list that someone can check off. Uh, that anyone in the community can check off so we don't start overlapping. Okay. Which PR? Okay. Yeah. I don't remember the name of the PR. It had, it was some massive one with, I, I think it was checking tools on, um, on um, Anvil for, for something with cloud-based tools. Uh, and there was a checklist on it. Well, actually, so Anvil is one of the reasons why we need to get uh, get a hold on this tool panel. Because, for example, for Anvil specifics, we don't need many tools, so we need to restructure panel to have the ability to do that. Okay, it's an hour. Thank you very much. So I'll try to follow up with this, and um, see you in two weeks. Bye, everyone.